September 17 this year, Netflix launched Squid Games, a new nine episode show that has taken the world by storm, breaking all records. With more than 130 million people having now watched the Korean show, making it the biggest show on Netflix ever, which is worth an estimated $1 billion in value for the company from the simple $20 million budget. The series revolves around a contest where 456 players in deep financial debt put their lives at risk to play a series of children's games for the chance to win a huge cash prize. But the question I want you to think about was the use of AI. Do you think there was any AI used to complete the games or could AI have been used to help increase the player's chances of winning? When watching your favourite show, have you ever asked yourself, is there any AI being used here? Could this have been possible years ago without the advances in the subject today? There are some areas of the show that would have been extremely difficult to execute without the use of AI. We've already talked about some of these areas, like recommendation systems in earlier Plain Talks episodes. There are also other areas like motion detection, facial recognition and robotics which would also need to have been used but we haven't covered in depth yet. Thinking further, there are also some areas in AI that could have been used to help the players increase their chances of winning, but we're not. These include reinforcement learning, covered in episode 6, and deep learning, covered in episode 7 of Plain Talks. There is also bias and probability theory, which we are also still to discuss. We will cover the areas not talked about yet in depth in future episodes, but for now, where did we see AI or potentially could have seen in the show everyone is talking about? Let's start at the beginning. The show consists of 456 players. These players would have needed to be identified from a much larger database and then filtered based on the requirements of a player profile. As talked about in episode 2, when talking about Spotify versus Pandora, the game's hosts would have needed to use a recommendation system to come up with the best 456 players to be approached to compete in the game. Game 1 is very famous, all around the world. In the show, this game was called Red Light Green Light, and this game would not have been able to be executed without the use of AI. The first type of AI used was motion detection. Motion detection algorithms detect movement, often in people, and can now be performed by training machine learning algorithms. In the show, motion detection was used to detect any player that was moving when the doll turned around to look. If any player was identified as moving, another type of artificial intelligence was used called facial recognition. If you remember, the huge database at the start to identify the players and the photo each player took before the game started meant that the machine learning model would have had enough photos to train the model for each player so that facial recognition could be used. With the third area of artificial intelligence used in the game, which was robotics. As the game needed to identify which player had moved, identified by motion detection and was about to be eliminated, identified by robotics, to then be removed from the standings and the leaderboard. That was of course facial recognition. But what about other games? Could artificial intelligence have been used to help the player's chance of winning? Let's go to the second game, which I like to call the biscuit game. This is where the players had to pick a shape and cut that shape out of a piece of honeycomb using only a needle. Although not used, reinforcement learning, which we have covered in an earlier episode, could have been used to train a model, or in this case players, and help them become better and better at completing this exercise, so that when they had to do it in the game, when the stakes were at their highest, they would succeed. Next we had Tug of War, the traditional game that had 10 players on each team, going up against another set of 10 players to pull a rope, with the aim to pull the rope towards their side. You would think, originally, that using something simple like a regression model, and using features like weight and height of each player might be the simplest way to predict the chances of each team winning. But there are many more factors that go into the game when we were watching the show. 
Player one talks about techniques and things that their team, that is seen to not be the strongest, can perform to outwit their opponent. This leads us to conclude that deep learning or artificial neural networks could have been used in this game to arrive at the foresight needed to help teams to win. What about the marbles game? It's just two people choosing a game to play with marbles and the winner having to be declared before the end of the given time. But some of the players decided not to play as they were supposed to and others experienced cheating from their partners. Although not used, the host of the game could have actually made this game a lot fairer by removing any bias from the game by choosing the pairs. By this point, they would have had so much data on each player and been able to arrive at the conclusion of the strengths and weaknesses of each player and thus create the best pair of matches across the players remaining in the game. Finally, we get to the glass bridge game, where we had 16 players remaining and each of them starting from player one having to move across the bridge made out of glass. At each step, the player had two choices on where they could step. On each step, one of the glass panes was solid enough to hold the weight of two players, while the other pane could not even hold the weight of one player. The players obviously did not know which was which. Not only that there would have been the probability of a player, one, the first to go, surviving versus each player after them, with the probability of the final player, player 16, having the highest chance of survival, each step on the glass bridge also had a 50-50 chance of being right or wrong. And if a player was to step on the wrong piece of glass, would again increase the probability level of survival with the weakened glass on that step now being smashed. There was also the curveball of one player having worked in the glass factory for years and was able to look at the light colour of the glass and correctly predict the right glass on two steps of the bridge, increasing the chance of survival for everyone remaining. Before, of course, the game's host saw that something was up and switched off the lights and significantly reduced the probability of survival using this method. So much artificial intelligence in one TV show makes you wonder how much is being used in the things we use and content we consume every single day. So what about some of the areas that we talked about in Squid Games? Where else do we see these used in the world today? Well, recommendation systems, as covered in episode 2, can be seen in musical video streaming platforms. Reinforcement learning, as covered in episode 6, is used in video games like Mario, where you are rewarded or punished based on your performance. Deep learning is used in many different areas, but some include forecasting with neural networks trained to understand patterns and detect the possibility, for example, in rainfall or uh, a rise or fall in stock prices, or even music composition, where neural networks can learn patterns in music and train itself enough to compose a fresh song. What about facial recognition? Well, using deep learning, cameras on our smartphones these days allow the use of facial recognition to estimate the age of a person based on facial features. Many police departments are also using facial recognition now to analyse video surveillance footage which can track objects and people. What about robotics? Well, using deep learning, robotics can be used in customer support systems today which means that we sometimes don't even realise we are talking to a machine instead of a human. They are also used in many other examples in the world today, ranging from healthcare to help save lives, RPA or robot process automation, where many jobs that have repetitive tasks are being replaced by machines, or even the use in military strategy for drone and missile launches. Just some examples of where this has been used today. Wow, what a spooktastic Halloween special episode. If you want to send us your questions, comments, suggestions or ideas, please email tarb at plaintalks.co.uk. Next time you're binging on your next favourite show on Netflix, have a think about artificial intelligence and if any has been or could be used to help make the lives easier of those people on your screens. You might be surprised to realise that it's already all around us in everything we watch. Plane Talks, episode 9 done. From myself, we'll see you next time.